Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show. I am Michael Bull. Thanks for being with us. We want to be your source for intel, forecasts, and success strategies. Uh, this segment is brought to you by Bull Realty Asset and Occupancy Solutions. Visit bullrealty.com. Well, today we have a very interesting show for you. We're going to talk about the U.S. office market. The show is called Office Sector 2018. You know, I think there's been a lot of changes in the office sector. You know, we've had a great uh, jobs market. Uh, we've had a lot of changes going on in the office market. You think about companies that have been reducing their square footage or reducing their square footage per employee. Then we're seeing some of that kind of backfire. Now some companies are doing the opposite. Uh, we're seeing companies buy large headquarters for their own use. We're seeing maybe the use of a sale leaseback transaction becoming more popular with some of the changes in the tax laws. And speaking of that, we have some major tax law changes. What is that going to bring to the job market and the office market? We'll then get into that and a lot more in today's show. Please welcome my first guest, Barbara Denham. She's an economist with Reese, and she's joining us on the phone. Barbara, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So you're uh, glad you're staying warm in uh, New York today? Yeah, it's very snowy here. <laughs> That's a good thing, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, Barbara, tell us, 2017, how did the office market shake out performance-wise? Uh, the office market did very well, uh, especially in the fourth quarter. It was, it, was a very, it was a good year. It wasn't a great year. So things uh, progressed similarly to prior quarters. Net absorption was about 5.2 million square feet, which was about the average of the previous quarters. And new construction wasn't as high. It was $7 million. Overall, the new construction that came online was $37.5 million, which is just above what it was in 2016. Net absorption was $21 million, which was actually below what it was. But when you net the new completions and the new demand, the vacancy rate was flat. So it's been 16.3%, the office vacancy rate, for three quarters in a row. So it's really in balance, you could say. The office rent growth was 0.6% for the quarter, but only 1.8% for the year. Last year it was 2.3%. So all in all, I think it's been a um, it's a good year, but it's not. It's still very there's it's, there's so much caution in the office market, um, and I know you wanted to talk about the tax um, impact, and I do think that we will see a pretty big um, impact at the end of the year. But what I what I think what we're seeing very very much this year is that there's some office markets that are doing very well and then there's some that just are not and when you net those two together it's pretty much a wash yeah well, that's interesting because I would have thought that uh, 1.8 percent increase in the rental rates in 2017 I would have expected that to have been a little higher was the forecast a little higher did that come in where you thought it would uh, that came in about where we thought mm -hmm. we thought it would be about a two percent growth so it's just a bit lower than what we thought um, again, there's a lot of uh, construction that's coming online both this quarter and next year. So in a lot of major cities where uh, net absorption is higher and job growth is higher, there's a lot of construction coming online. So a lot of landlords have been cautious about overpricing their inventory, even their new inventory, when they know they have to compete with a lot of new construction. Yeah. Right, that makes sense. And then in some sectors, uh, some of our audience that are in other sectors might think that 16.3% vacancy is rather high, but to put it mm -hmm. in historic figures, Barbara, how does that shake out? Well, that's what's been so interesting about this whole expansion is that it has really, I don't want to say it's stagnated, but it's been persistently high. At this point in the prior expansions, vacancy rates we're in like 12.5%, uh, 13%, 11%. So this expansion has been very um, tepid in terms of overall occupancy growth because firms are just not leasing the square footage that they used to when they had jobs. So it's been, in terms of office employment growth, we've seen much better uh, job growth this expansion than in previous, but you're just not seeing the corresponding office leasing that goes with that office employment because so many firms are 
they, we call it densifying, but we're squeezing more millennials, more staff into smaller spaces, and we're giving up the bigger offices, the bigger conference rooms, and the bigger cubicles for shared spaces. We're allowing more hoteling and working from home. So you just don't see this strong leasing activity in this expansion like you had in previous expansions. Yeah, I mean, that's extremely interesting to see kind of how the working environment's changing. Um, and also, as I mentioned uh, in the uh, monologue, if you want to call it that, you know, that some of these companies are also kind of uh, pushing back the other way now that, uh, that employment is so tight uh, that they are giving their employees a little more space. I know uh, maybe uh, if someone was looking for a job and was really happy to have a job, they could be elbow to elbow with a headset on uh, on a bench. Uh, but as, the, uh, as there's more jobs out there, there's more competition, I think some of the tenants that we represent are looking at, hey, how can we have the upper edge in recruiting and retention uh, and increase productivity? And so it'd be interesting to see what, how that moves forward with the occupancy per square footage per employee, how that, that tends to change. But uh, let's talk about the Tax Act, uh, Barbara. It seems like if companies are going to have reduced tax, rate, tax rates, they should have more money. It's called the Jobs Act, right? Part of the name of the act. So what do you guys expect for office demand moving forward from these tax changes? So, uh, yes, I mean, you, you, you stepped on uh, two things that will be very positive for the office market. First, the tax act, uh, you know, tax, corporate tax rates will be lower, so companies will be able to retain a lot more of their profits. And uh, they will probably put a lot of that money into um, their office space and the amenities for their staff. Think about it. Uh, one of the reasons why this year has been more, somewhat disappointing to a lot of people is I think a lot of tenants put off making their office uh, relocation or expansion plans in the wake of a the election last year and b the hope that there would be some kind of fiscal stimulus so they've been waiting and waiting and waiting and now that we finally have this fiscal stimulus i think a lot of people will say okay it's here we're done we can we can now you know make these decisions and you know their staff is getting older millennials have kind of uh aged out of that closed space so you know, space per employee is an amenity, and you need to accommodate uh, the staff for more amenities when the unemployment rate is lo this low. So you do need to start leasing more square footage per employee to give your staff a little more privacy. So we think that, uh, A, the, the, the net leasing per employee will go up, and we do think that landlord or that tenants will take on more space. But remember, you know, in office leasing, it takes a while for you know when you start your decision making and your planning and your and your searching around, it takes a while to sign those leases and move in and have an impact on the office market. So we do think that we there will be more leasing this year, but we won't really feel the impact until the very end of the year of 2018 and then starting in 2019. So we think it's going to be a very good positive impact on the office market in terms of occupancy growth. However, we do see more new construction coming online. So, uh, you know, just as occupancy growth is growing, uh, inventory is growing. So it may still be somewhat of a wash in the next year or two in terms of overall um, vacancy rates. Well, that's a good point. Uh, it does take a while. You know, if, uh, you know, if you come to us today and, and want a new space, it's, it's going to be a year out before you move in. Right. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So if the, with the stimulus uh, just happening really uh, in the last month, um, so what would you guess then, Barbara, if you had to look into your Reese crystal ball and say, mm -hmm. hey, a year from now, if we've got vacancy mm -hmm. you know, now at, uh, what did you say, 16.3% uh, uh -huh. and we've had, kind of, I guess, rather tepid uh, rate increases at less than 2%, what would you expect a year from now? I think you know we uh, right now our our forecasts are looking still in the 15 to 16 percent rate so i don't think again if we have occupancy growth with inventory growth we're not going to see a huge movement in the vacancy rate probably to 16.0 or high 15 percent mm -hmm. we're not going to see this huge drop like we did say in 20 2006 2007 to 12.5 or 13 
-hmm. It's really been a stagnant uh, movement. Again, it's a national rate, so you don't you don't get these huge leases in um, nationally overall like you do in New York City. New York City actually has the lowest vacancy rate. It's um, 8.7 percent. So you might see a huge lease in, in New York that would drop it to say 7.9 percent, but you're not going to see that nationally because it's it's such a huge market mixing you know the Clevelands and the Dayton Ohio's of the world with the San Francisco's and the New York Cities. Right, right. That's a good point. And another thing I like to look at with you, Barbara, is the investment market, the sales market, and cap rates and volume because there's a lot of changes going on. How's that impacting the office investment market? So stay tuned. We'll be right back. We'll have more from Barbara Denham with Reese on the office investment market. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. Stay with us.